Good evening. I am Niyama Chumthanawala, an assistant professor at SKB's College of Pharmacy, Kamti, Nagpur. I'll be delivering a presentation on Medical Dictionary for Regulatory Activities. So what is MedDRA? MedDRA is basically a dictionary of medical terminologies which has been organized or designed by ICH which is the International Conference on Harmonization. The intent of ICH in developing MedDRA was to have a standard, medically rigorous and well-maintained terminology to facilitate communication. Let's just take an overview of what MedDRA entails. It is hierarchical, it is multi-axial, it is strictly maintained, it is regularly updated and it is multilingual. It has several versions from the time of its inception. The current version is 20.1, which has been issued in September 2017. So, the Medical Dictionary for Regulatory Activities terminology was designed for re sharing regulatory information for human medical products. In order for MedDRA to harmonize the exchange of coded data, users should be consistent in the assignment of terms to verbatim reports of symptoms, signs, diseases, etc. Many times it happens that what we think is the right way of diagnosing a disease or a condition is not the exact condition. A headache can be severe or mild, depends on our terminology used, for which to have an internationally collaborative terminology, MedDRA was introduced. MedDRA is a large terminology with very specific granular terms called LLTs, lowest level terms, that accurately record the reporter's words verbatim. LLTs are generally synonyms linked to their parent terms, known as preferred terms. PTs are also relatively specific and large in number. What are the advantages? The adoption of a dedicated single standardized terminology offers a number of clear advantages for regulators, industry and other stakeholders, including healthcare professionals, patients and research organizations. There are basically four advantages. The removal of the need to convert data from one terminology to another, preventing the loss or distortion of data and allowing savings and resources. The entire data is compiled on a website which is why it's easily accessible to one and all. There are improvements in the ease, the quality and the timeliness of data available for effective analysis, exchange and decision making. There is consistency of the terminology throughout the different stages of the development from phase 1 till phase 4 and post the clinical trials, the post-marketing surveillance, the med DRA terminologies are acceptable throughout. Therefore, there can be effective cross-referencing and analysis of data. The facilitation of electronic exchange of data relating to medicinal products can also be done. Let's take a look over the significant milestones of MedDRA since its inception. MedDRA concept was basically introduced with the help of MHRA from UK and was developed using the ICH process, including WHO. Since 1990, there was no standard international medical terminology. But moving on, as you can see, from 1993, there came an amended UK terminology, which was then called MedDRA. Moving on, ICH adopted MedDRA version 1.0. In 1996, version 1.0 was released. In 1997, version 2.0 was renamed to have MedDRA, that is the Medical Dictionary for Regulatory Activities. Eventually, the steering committee established the MedDRA Management Committee. And in 1998, MSSO, that is the Maintenance and Support Services Organization, was contracted to maintain and support MedDRA by IFPMA as a trustee of ICH. I know this sounds like a lot of big words, but trust me, as you go through this PPT or as you understand this presentation, it will be much simpler. Eventually, by 1999, the initial version of MedDRA, version 2.1, was available and MSSO was responsible for taking care of it, whereas the Japanese version was called Japanese Maintenance Organization. As previously mentioned, the current version is 20.1. Multilingual to maximize data sharing. As you can see, this blue blue section in between tells us that every term in the medical dictionary has got an eight digit numeric code. For example, this one stands for headache, as you can see in English. Likewise, for people all across the globe, somebody who can be Dutch, German, Spanish or Chinese have 
their own version of what the word actually means. And to have a uniformity, there is an eight-digit numeric code for which headache is 1009211. There are five hierarchical levels of medical term coding. This is basically the structure of MedDRA. It begins with the lowest level terms, moving on to the preferred terms, which are compiled to, get to, to give us high level terms, which are compiled further to give us high level group terms, which are ultimately formed into a much more specific class, which are called the system organ class. I'll give you another example. This is the more adequate or the clear example of the hierarchical system. So as you can see, the lowest level terms are more than 70,000. What does this actually tell us? This actually tells us that there are more than 70,000 terms in the lowest level term. This parallels to how the information is communicated, reflecting how an observation is reported in practice. This level actually directly supports assigning MedDRA codes within a user database. After the lowest level terms, all of these are compiled and there are more than over 20,000 preferred terms. These are single concepts, which can mean for symptoms, signs, disease diagnosis, therapeutic indications, investigations, surgical or medical procedures, and medical, social, or family history characteristics. So you can understand that we are going from a general outlook to a more specific outlook. As we move from the lowest level terms for a single topic, we move on to over 20,000, which are preferred terms. Moving on, there are over 1,700 related preferred terms, which are called high level terms. These are based upon anatomy, pathology, physiology, etiology, and or function. These high level terms are in turn linked to over 330 high level group terms. Finally, these high level group terms are grouped into 26 system organ classes, which are grouped by etiology, that is infections and infestations, manifestation site, for example, gastrointestinal disorders, or for purpose, for example, surgical and medical procedures. There's also a system organ class accounting for social circumstances. Secondly, like I mentioned, it's also a multi-axial structure. For example, let's consider a preferred term for influenza. Influenza, in our common language, we know that it's a respiratory tract infection for, for which there can be a primary SOC. It can be classified under infections and infestations, but it can also be classified under respiratory, thoracic, and mediastinal disorders. It depends on the category of high-level term, high-level group term, and eventually system organ class that we choose. Therefore, multi-axial basically means that there can be several points of view for a single medical concept. Moving on, let me give you the relationship of lowest level terms with preferred terms and as we move on up the hierarchy. For example, there are four lowest level terms given by four individuals for one concept, hemolytic anemia, hemolytic anemia which might be drug induced, hemolytic anemia which might be acquired from some environmental agent, hemolytic anemia which is also mentioned as anemia hemolytic or cult which is basically an unknown cause. All of these can be grouped together to one preferred term which is hemolytic anemia again which means a lowest level term can be exactly same as a preferred term, it can be similar or it can be inverse of the preferred term. These seem like small changes but they make a big difference. Moving on, what is the relationship of preferred terms with high level terms? Again, let's take the, the example of the preferred term hemolytic anemia. A second individual suggests Coombs negative hemolytic anemia and thirdly, hereditary hemolytic anemia. All these three can be grouped together to give you anemia hemolytic NEC. That is, which does not have any specified uh, cause so there is it's not been classified under any uh, specific category which is why it is NEC. Moving on the relationship of high level terms with high level group terms. As you saw the high level term was anemia hemolytic, anemia hemolytic immune, amino, uh, anemia hemolytic immune of the newborn and anemia hemolytic which is probably due to some mechanical factors. All of these can be grouped together to give you one high level group term which is hemolysis and related conditions. 
I am sure you will be understanding how we are gradually proceeding to become more and more specific to the disorder or disease which is our interest. Lastly, the high level group terms are grouped together in hardly one or two. There can be multiple high level group terms. They can be eventually grouped together to give you one system organ class. As we have seen, there are 26 system organ classes. In this particular example, the high level group terms are hemolysis and related conditions or anemia, non hemolytic and marrow depressions. Both of these can be grouped together to basically suggest that they can be blood and lymphatic disorders. Right. Eventually, let's come down to what are the applications of MedDRA. As you have seen, let's summarize and try to give some points for the applications. MedDRA can be used to aggregate reported terms in medically meaningful groupings for review, for analysis, and or summary of safety data. It can also be used to facilitate identification of common data sets for evaluation of clinical and safety information. It can also be used to facilitate consistent retrieval of specific cases or medical conditions from a database. It can also be used to improve consistency in comparing and understanding safety signals and aggregated clinical data. It can also be used to facilitate electronic data interchange of clinical safety in information. Therefore, we can consider MedDRA as a collaborative standardization project which has been initiated by ICH. In the end, I would just like to say MedDRA is a very useful tool for all agencies to come together on a common platform and have a common terminology for every disease and condition out there. I hope this presentation was useful to you. Thank you.